So let's imagine I was going to shade this lobster claw with cross hatching. How would I start? What would I do? First thing I would do is zoom in. Next thing I would do is I'd start to think about where the light is coming from. So let's ask the question, where is the light? Okay, and just for, for fun, I'm going to say the light's coming from, from this angle. Okay, and then you have to sort of decide on the thickness of your cross hatches. So I'm looking at this pen right now. If I press pretty hard, um, that line looks good, but I was pressing hard. So I'm going to increase the width of this brush. Let's see what it looks like at 32 pixels. That's a little bit too thick. I'm kind of like setting my brush, spending time to get the brush right so that the cross hatches aren't going to look bad. I think this is about right. Okay. Now the next thing I'm going to do is, since I know where the light's coming from, I'm going to ask what is the darkest spot? What's the darkest spot? Um, and if the light's coming from the top, it's going to be, it's going to be around this area here. It's going to be around these regions here and it's going to be around these regions here. So now that I kind of know that, that's where I'm going to start the cross hatching process. So let's just leave these arrows in for now and I'll kind of just show you, uh, I guess how I would approach this. So I'm going to, I made a new layer. And I might not like what I produce, but we'll we'll see what happens here. So the first thing is, as I start making my cross hatches, one of the things you want to keep in mind is you want your cross hatches to sort of flow with the shape of the object. Okay, so I'm usually not doing completely straight lines. I'm usually doing lines. And the specific intention of these lines is to flow with the shape of the object. So let me pause here, get a little bit more progress, and come back. So once I've done cross hatching um, in one direction, you want to start doing some cross hatching in other directions. So what I'm going to start to do here is make marks like this. Okay. In other directions but also following the shape of the claw okay so I'm gonna keep doing this now usually what you're gonna start to find is when you do cross hatching like this um, keep keep adding lines in different directions where the object should be darkest okay so now I'm doing diagonal lines and what you're gonna see is you're gonna start to realize that some of these regions you think should actually be pure black and I'll show you the region I'm thinking about as soon as I finish these diagonal lines right here I think this should actually be pure black so you're gonna to start to see you're gonna to start to make decisions you think certain regions you think should just be colored in black and the cross hatching is gonna sort of lead you to that conclusion okay so I'm just gonna fill in some of these regions pure black probably in here that's kind of like a little crevice. It wouldn't get a lot of light. So I'm going to make it black above the teeth. It's also going to help us see the teeth a little bit better. Okay. <clears throat> That's pretty good. Let's do the middle. So we have to make a decision how we're going to treat the middle. Um, we can't do... A whole bunch of lines in the middle so what I kind of do what we might decide to do is let's try something like this 
I don't know if I'm going to like this or not, but we can always like erase it in the future. Um, some of these you're going to want to connect. You're going to just have to do like experiments. You're not quite going to know how to approach all these areas. You're just going to have to do experiments and we can always erase it later if we don't like it. But I definitely, I don't want a lot of this to be, to be white because the white areas should be really reserved for what are clearly highlights. Okay. And we can always add these in the highlights we can add in later with a white pen. Okay. So I'm just progressively making more and more lines, but I am making the density of the lines less here in the middle where I think it would be of moderate tonality. Again, just progressively adding more and more and more. I think it would be white here. Connecting some of these. Now we want to make a decision how we're going to treat the lightest areas, which are going to be the top. Okay, so I'm going to try to do a line like this. And I'm going to do a line like that here and here. And then I'm going to do something like that, something like that, we want this thing to kind of uniformly come together. Now, this has quite a bit of cross-hatching. I'm going to zoom out at this point and see what I think it looks like at a smaller size. And I'm starting, to, I'm starting to make guesses here. I think I want these things a little bit darker. And I want more, I want more lines. So you can zoom out and you can draw zoomed out and zooming out is going to help you make different different decisions on how to shade this thing. Again, kind of making lines that go with the flow. Just go with the flow. Don't worry too much about making any mistakes. You can always erase. I want more black in here. See, that looks a lot better. Don't be afraid of really putting black. Treat this thing. That's not bad. This would be darker here in this crevice. Look for like crevices, nooks, and crannies. Those should be those should be treated darkly. That's pretty good. And really, if I zoom out on a real a real small scale, it looks looks pretty good. So I'm pretty satisfied with this cross hatching. Now you might say you liked the other way I did it before better but these are just these are one's not necessarily better than the other these are different styles 
So if you decide to do cross hatching, it's just sort of a different style. It's not necessarily better or worse. It's just a different style. Some people like it. Some people don't like it. I actually like it a lot. So let's compare it. Let's compare this to this. This is definitely more, it's got smoother. It's definitely smoother. And in that sense, the gray washes sort of captures the smoothness of the cuticle of this lobster claw, which would be hard and smooth. So in this sense, the gray wash and these sort of stipple like marks are probably the better treatment than the cross hatching. Cross hatching sort of um, detracts a little bit from the smoothness. So you could make the judgment that the gray washes are better. Let's see what happens when we combine everything. I think the combination is less successful. The combination of all those treatments with with the cro added cross hatching. Um, but let's see what happens when we reduce the opacity of the cross hatches. Sometimes doing something like this can really contribute to your piece. In this sense, if you had the cross hatching all off, this is kind of like a kind of like a naive uh, virgin lobster claw that has not been in many battles. But perhaps perhaps this lobster claw reflects an more elderly distinguished lobster who has won many 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 battles and has the scars to prove it so you can see how combining these different techniques can give you some sort of different effects and you really want the ass you want really want to start getting to the point where you're starting to think about what is the spirit of the creature that i want to i want to emphasize and in that case you might really like to sort of show off these scars And you might even you might even come back at this point if you've decided then that that's your goal. You're going to try to exemplify this lobster claw as a warrior lobster who has won many many battles. You might actually come in and then you might make some jagged edges where where he's had some chunks taken out of him, stuff like that. So I don't know if this is actually going to contribute to that theory or that that sort of portrayal. But let's let's let me show you how you how you would do this. Okay, so I would create a new layer. I would get a white brush. Let's say let's do let's let's make his claw a little bit damaged, a little bit jagged. So I'm painting with a white brush. I'm gonna grab a black brush. And just sort of complete that line. Add a couple sharp cuticular regions where this thing got kind of ripped. Now, I'm not sure if I like this better or not. On, off. On, I do like it better on. See now I've actually made a creative I've made a creative contribution which actually adds to the essence of the lobster. Lobsters are these creatures that fight each other and win battles for mates. So this lobster claw has clearly been in many more battles than this lobster claw. And this lobster claw has clearly been in many more battles than this lobster claw. Okay? So these are how I'm sort of doing experiments and making making decisions based on how they contribute to my piece. So this is a good um, example of how you do cross-hatching.